evening and welcome to Believer's Chapel. My name is Mary Anthony and this evening I'm going to talk about, and it might be a series eventually, but I'm going to talk about one of the hidden dangers in a believer's life. So the enemy is definitely relentless towards us. The hidden danger, what the ultimate goal is, it can destroy our relationship with Jesus Christ and we're going to talk about how to avoid this hidden danger. Here's a scripture that's going to help us understand. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 14. And it says, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So, Father, I pray that this word goes out according to the way that you want it to be portrayed, the way that your Holy Spirit carries it to each individual here and who is watching this later on. Father, I thank you for everything. I thank you for who you are, and I thank you for what you're doing to each and every one of us in our lives as we prepare to work in the kingdom of God. So, on the spiritual front lines is where Satan lurks, seeking to destroy us so that we will not serve God or do his will. That is the ultimate goal of Satan, not to serve God or do his will. 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy devour, or your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring, roaring lion looking for someone to devour. If we are disarmed or a discouraged believer who has fallen or defeat, guess what? We are no threat to him whatsoever. Doesn't matter because we've, we've already declared ourselves being defeated. So we're no threat. We're not working for the kingdom of God. But if we're armed and diligently working for God's kingdom, then guess what? We are on the front lines. It doesn't matter if you have a title or if you don't have a title. If you're a pastor or not a pastor. If you're evangelist, teacher. It doesn't matter about the title. It matters if you are truly working on the front lines to um, provide God's kingdom, to further it. Satan's tactics of warfare are specifically designed to separate you from God and his blessings. Separate you from love and respect of your family and friends. Those are three huge pieces, and they're all separating you. And you cannot live without Christ the way that he wants you to. One of Satan's means to accomplish this, and this is one of the hidden um, hidden things that I wanted to talk about is insecurity. And we all think, okay, yeah, insecurity, yeah, we all have them, but, you know, I can overcome them. But what is it? It is often the quiet, lonely moments when the uncertain nature of life and our own faults most trouble our thoughts and make us unsure of where we are headed. We feel anxious about tasks ahead of us and hesitant about our own abilities. So are we already convincing ourselves that we can't succeed because of insecurity? So let me give you a, a biblical example of insecurity. Moses. Moses spent much of his time in the isolated wilderness tending to flocks. Moses had a lot of time to think about all the failures and missteps that he had made in his life. Moses spent the majority of his life as a stranger in a strange place, meaning a Hebrew by birth in an Egyptian court and then an Egyptian by upbringing among the Midianite shepherds. He just didn't seem to fit anywhere. So when God called Moses to lead his people of Israel out of Egypt, it's no wonder that the insecurity was activated in his life and Moses felt incapable of doing what God commanded him to do. At first, Moses gave every excuse 
as to why God should not choose him. Exodus 3.11, I am nobody, and I'm paraphrasing these. Exodus 3.13, I have no credibility with the Israelites. Exodus 4.1, I have no way to convince anyone to believe me. Exodus 4.10, I don't have the skill to carry out the assignment. God is going to place you in situations that will make you feel unstable, insecure. Why are you putting me here? Why? It's to grow your faith in him. Because he knows and we know that we cannot do it in our own faith. We don't want to do it in our own faith. If Christ isn't in it, then there's no reason for us to be doing it. But he will enable you. I remember um, one time I was very young in the Lord, and I was, it was a Sunday, and I knew I had to get up and give this prophetic word. And I'm, I'm you know, hemming and hawing, and I'm going, no, I've got to do this. I have to be obedient. And I got up, I gave the word, I sat back down, and I said, oh, Jesus, thank you so much for holding, or holding me up or standing beside me. And I heard him say, so specifically, I was not standing beside you. I was dwelling within you. And that was the only way that I can do it is if he dwells within me. So let's go and talk about some root causes of insecurity. So what causes someone to feel insecurity? Many times this comes from, as a result of feeling inadequate. At some point in your life, and I'm sure we all have, we have faced rejection or lack of acceptance, feeling threatened, off balance, or on edge. The um, individuals could have grew up in an insecure environment. Their world was very unpredictable. There was uncertainty to life that prevented them from feeling safe. They may have been off balance because their father was an alcoholic, or their mother or father left home or perhaps even they died when they were young. It creates an atmosphere of instability. The loss of a parent is one of the most devastating events that can take place in a child's life. It can easily shake the emotional foundation of their world. They may never recover from the loss, and they still have a sense of emptiness and insecurity that they cannot shake. I know that probably 15 years plus um, my parents had both passed away. And of course, I was a lot older. I was not a child. I couldn't even imagine because I understand that emptiness. It's like a part of you is gone, but Christ can fill that. But there was still an emptiness. I couldn't imagine being a child and having the loss of your parents. Other circumstances that create instability in our lives is failure. Financial loss, divorce. When we feel insecure about ourselves, we will not be able to accomplish the goals that God has set us to reach. God, God gave us the goals. And if we're insecure, then we're insecure in ourselves. And we're not believing and trusting in Christ to get us through this. So we feel insecure, hopeless, helpless, overwhelmed, and unable to accomplish anything. It involves the feelings of inner turmoil. If you have inner turmoil, you can't enjoy life and feel secure. You can't accomplish the goals God has given you. <coughs> Excuse me. Overwhelmed and fearful. <laughs> the truth is, God never meant for you to struggle with feelings that lead to defeat. Because if you are defeated, Satan's winning. Satan's tactics of warfare are specifically designed to separate you from God and his blessing, just like I said before, and separate you from the love and respect of friends and family. So let's do a quick thing about the effects of insecurity. 
a lack of lasting relationships. These are the effects of insecurity. A perception of being prideful and snobbish. Indecisiveness. A fearful attitude. A brooding sense of anger. A record of being passed over for prom pr promotions and honors. The inability to meet others and establish friendships. The belief that success is based on the praise, approval, and acceptance of others. That's the effect of insecurity. And the desire to be in charge of every conversation. That's an insecurity. That's an effect of insecurity. But the greatest effect of insecurity will have on your life concerns your relationship with God. The deeper the insecurity, the more likely you will struggle with your relationship with him. You can't focus on worshiping him when your mind is set on yourself. How do I pair to others? What can I do to get ahead? The only thing that brings true, lasting security to your heart is a true personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Everything else is secondary and will never bring contentment. So, I know I went through a lot of that fast. <laughs> Hang on, because we're going to go a little bit faster. <laughs> How do you overcome insecurities? And, and I mean, you guys, check yourself. Bring it to the Lord. Well, that's part of this. So, anyways, ask, there it is. Ask God to expose the problem of insecurity. This is where courage comes in. This is where your relationship with Jesus comes in. Because you're going to say, yeah, I got insecurities, and I'm not going to do anything about it. And you're going to go around the mountain again and again and again, and you won't understand why, God, aren't you taking this away from me, when you won't even acknowledge that you have an insecurity and bring it to the Lord. Um, be willing to open your heart to him and confess how you feel. This is the key step of healing, and it is an essential step to gaining God's strength for your situation. Look at David. David had a tremendous courage, even though his brothers ridicule him and question why he even showed up on the battlefield to fight Goliath. Note, a courageous spirit is not something that we receive at birth. We gain courage through the faith in God. Make the decision, number two, make the decision to overcome your insecurity. You must make a conscious decision, a conscious effort to obey the Holy Spirit instead of responding to the self-defeating emotions that are currently controlling you. And again, it goes back to the first one where, okay, I bring it to the Lord. My heart is real. What's my insecurity? He tells me and then I do nothing about it. Why haven't you removed it? Because you have to make that conscious effort to obey him. If, if you are true, true to the Lord, he's going to tell you what to do. Yes, and it may be difficult, but with him you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Ask God to give you wisdom and to make good choices and empower you to carry them out. Like I said, it's going to be difficult. But if you ask him, Lord, I'm not, I, I can't do this on my own. Empower me. Show me what I need to see. Let me see it. Let me feel it. Let me sit, sit at your feet. And he will. Number three, recognize God. Recognize how God sees you by studying his word. How God sees you is not necessarily, I'm sorry, how you see yourself is not necessarily accurate which is why God's perspective and truth are so important. There is nothing that will make you um, feel more secure than reading the Bible. Experiencing God's presence and realizing how he loves you. And we were talking about this earlier, about, yeah, I know that Jesus loves me. I know that he's there for me. But really seek him. And that love will pour out the way that he loves you, not the way that you think he does. Get into the word, and the Holy Spirit will just say,
saturate you with it, and it will open new doors. I believe that we will never be able to fully comprehend how Jesus loves us. The human mind is not big enough to fully grasp the love of God. In heaven, perhaps, we will finally know how much God loves us. Romans 8, verses 38 to 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In times of meditation on God's word, pray that the Holy Spirit will teach you to see yourself as God sees you. That's really, that's, that's huge. Hashtag truth. Hashtag God loves you. Hashtag you are loved by asking him. Focus, number four, focus on the positive, on your positive qualities. You all have plenty of truly wonderful traits. We all do. God has already given them to us. God created you with many excellent abilities, and you must acknowledge them to embrace the purpose that he has for your life. Ask God to reveal the gifts he has given to you for his honor and glory. And then dedicate all those skills and talents to his use. I, this just came up. Um, it, it just fit with this. So I'm going to have to, I'll read this to you guys. This is so cool. And it talks about the talents and gifts that the Lord has placed into you. So my sister sent this text to us. I have five other siblings. Sent it to all of us in a group message. Um, I think it was last week. And this is what she said. So, I just received a phone call and didn't recognize the name, so I let it go into voicemail. She probably got a landline. The guy was leaving a message and mentioned Dad's name, Jack Jarvis. So I quickly picked up the phone and asked who was calling. He said his name was Joseph Maselli. He was a missionary a long time ago in the jungles of Africa. No electricity, no malls, nothing. Dad helped him get in touch with his mother in the, in the States with ham radio, which is um, an amateur radio. Joe and his mom talked a couple times per year. This would be like a phone patch. It's radio stuff. He was so appreciative of Dad for helping him, for helping him, and they both loved the Lord and wanted to serve him. They both loved people. Joe was putting together a scrapbook of the life together. He Googled dad's name and got the childhood phone number. But I guess my number was the only one associated in the search, so he called me. This guy is 90 years old. He has his mind and sounded very young. It is a little emotional 14 years later that someone was looking for dad. Thought you guys might, oh, thought you guys might like that story. My dad's talent and the Lord, he used them to connect people all around the world. I remember meeting him. Um, I stopped to the house, and him and his wife were going to Guatemala. It's really, really cool. So the fifth way to overcome insecurity is to visualize God's work in your life. Visualization means that you imagine yourself doing God's will and achieving the goals he has set for you. This is faith. As Romans 4.17 4, says, calling, things are not as though they were. It means that you set your focus on God's plan and count whatever he promised you is already fulfilled. Pray that God will give you a vision for what he wants, you to, um, what he wants to do through you. Six. Stop comparing yourself with others. I, I hear this so many times in every aspect of someone's life. Realize that you are not like anyone else. And that's a good thing. That's an awesome thing. God has a specific plan for your life. Therefore, when you try to live out a life in competition with another person, you set yourself up for defeat. 
instead of wearing yourself out trying to live up to other people's expectations and standards, because it can be exhausting, ask God to show you what his best is for you. And Jesus said, Matthew eleven thirty, his yoke for you is easy and his burden is light. Number seven, to overcome insecurity is to avoid the trap of blaming someone else. As long as you store hurt and unforgiveness in your heart, you'll keep tripping over the landmine of insecurity. It's going around the same mountain over and over and over again. Instead, ask God to show you what you need to learn from the situation and grow closer to him. Accept responsibility for however you disobeyed him. Number eight is reward yourself when you do the right thing. And what I mean by that is allow God to bless you by celebrating his goodness in times of victory and enjoying the life he has given you. Praise him and rejoice that God is using you to do his work in the world because that's what we are here for. The most important thing, this is number nine, you should do to overcome insecurity is believe God's word. In Ephesians 6, 17, the Apostle Paul calls um, scriptures the sword of the spirit. This is because the Holy Spirit uses God's word to free you from the enemy's snares and protect you from his deadly weapons. Scripture is a powerful defense against the enemy's tactics, so embrace it. Pray that God will use his word mightily in your life. Father, I thank you for this message. Father, I, um, I continually ask that we examine ourselves and we bring it to you and you show us things that we never thought because you know us better than we know ourselves and that we take the action and we move and as we move we are taking steps closer to further your kingdom and yet we're in your protection so father i thank you for this opportunity i praise you and love you in your son's holy and precious name amen